And one of the greatest things about CSS3 is that it now affords us the possibility of implementing the at font face rule. And what that means for us, as designers or anybody in fact, is the simple notion that you can now choose from so many, such a vast array of different fonts that you can use in your projects. And that's going to be really an eye-opening experience for you, especially if you found that the traditional web-safe fonts were rather limiting, and they can be. That's true. But nevertheless, what I will be talking to you about is how we can implement these new elements in place. Now, there had been advances in working with web-based fonts and as I'll show you here, there's a website at font face face off. And it's basically just a list of like, you know, uh, different um, companies like, for example, fonts.com. And you'll notice you can go to these places and they have all kinds of fonts that you can work with and, and use. But for the most part, these uh, different companies like font spring example, um, ask you to purchase fonts that you're going to be using. And some of these are great, you know, they're, they're non-traditional type foundries. It's not Linotype here or even Adobe.com for that matter. But there's some pretty good choices when it comes to working with fonts online in a web-based environment. Nevertheless, let's say you don't want to get into any kind of paid scheme or anything like this. You just want to be working with any number of free fonts that are available. Now there's a lot of great places where you can find fonts. I personally uh, do like the League League of Movable Type. When you go to their website you'll see that they offer you a number of fonts and they're completely free. I think it's a really good thing uh, that they're doing and um, giving typographers the opportunity to spread their work and uh, get a little more renown. And there's some really nice ones in here actually so you can check them out and see what they look like. And what if we want to now start using some of these? And by the way, League of Movable Type has some really nice ones but you know they, they are still rather limited in in respect to a lot of the different fonts that are out there and available. Well one of the best places that I can draw your attention to is a website called Font Squirrel. And this is it right here. And why is this a great website? Well for a number of reasons. Number one, if you have a font that you own and you wish to convert it into many different formats that will be supported in an online environment, they happen to have something called a font face generator. And we're going to use that in just a second and I'll show you how. And aside from that though, they also have a number of really cool fonts that are available. Some of them through they themselves. By the way, if you didn't already recognize font spring brings us font squirrel so I guess this is a means of their you know using font squirrel which is a free website and you can use it completely as it says here hundred percent free for commercial use um, but you know it's good advertising for their paid for service as well nevertheless as I mentioned this is completely free and if you look at for example most downloaded you'll see that there's tons of different fonts that you can peruse and look at and you know have some fun with there's some really nice ones out there some are eh, maybe not as great as others certainly but hey what do you want for free right so uh, choose the ones you like best and especially the ones that look best here are some newly added ones and I've included some of these in the font folder that you're going to be working with, um, uh, you know, just to see what they look like, Lobster and OSP, just because they were new. Here you'll also see font kits where you don't have to go through the generator. There's just a bunch of fonts that have all of them already converted. But nevertheless, I've downloaded one of the fonts. I believe it's in just off the home section here. See, Museo is a nice one to uh, the slab or not. But here's one chunk five, just to show you a nice chunky slab serif as we have right here. It's from the League of Movable Type. And if you were to download this OTF, open type format, that's something that you know you could be able to use on your computer, uh, your desktop. That's not a problem. 
but let me just go to my desktop for a second and show you. There it is, chunk 5, right? And my OTF open type format, it's showing me all of the glyphs that are in there, but only using one OTF file is not enough. We need to support many different versions of this particular file in order to make it work so that every single browser will be able to see chunk 5 the way I want them to. So part of what this is all about is the offer that Font Squirrel has for us through its generator and by the way this is information from Font Spring, the people who make Font Squirrel. You'll see that we are going to be delivered true type WOFF, EOT, and SVG font formats. And what you can see here in our font face declaration, it shows you that, you know, in earlier versions of IE, EOT are the only one that's going to work. Same thing with IE9, although WOFF is accepted as well. And you'll see that true type is accepted for most browsers and SVG is accepted for a number of browsers as well, right? And this WOFF um, will also be available the emerging standard format um, for other things. Um, here we're working with mobile platforms including the iPhone and the iPad, the SVG. So when we go through the Font Squirrel at font face generator, this is the information that we're going to receive. So I'm going to go to the font face generator and after I've downloaded that chunk file to my desktop, I'm going to add this particular file. So here it is, chunk 5. All right. Now I'm going to agree that, yes, this is totally legal and eligible for web embedding. So I click on that, and then your download button appears. And that should, in just a second, download into your appropriate downloads folder. And there you go. So, if I now want to see that information, I'm just going to go here to my Downloads folder. I'll just open that up. And you'll see here it says Web Font Kit. There's a bunch of information in here, some really nice stuff. And as you can see here, it gives you specimen files, but these are just really you know, CSS information. What you really want to look for is, hey, let's look at this demo HTML file. If I open this up, let me just shut that down. Look what it shows you, Chunk 5 Roman. And it shows you at different sizes what Chunk 5 will look like. That's pretty amazing. Some really nice things there. And there's a sample layout. Obviously, I wouldn't use this for body, but I kind of want to use it for my H1. So we can see that, wow, as a display font, this nice slabby Chunk 5 serif slab serif looks pretty good. However, be aware, I'm looking at this on a Mac and you'll see that the anti-aliasing is uh, automatically set up on a Mac, but in Windows, Windows rendering, you'll see that things with, you know, rounded edges like this um, oftentimes will produce kind of chunky effects. So it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to be working with this. Some are better than others, certainly. But be aware of that Windows rendering, right? In some of the paid services, you have auto-hinting, which sort of removes that, but that's why you're paying for those services. Glyphs and Languages shows you all the different glyphs that are available, some installing information, right? And we're going to use this installing information as well. Actually, I'm just going to copy this information right here, and then you can uh, work with it. Or, even better, I'm just going to shut that down. Even better, you can actually uh, do the same as we start to look at the finished files that we have available that I've provided you with. So here is the Chunk 5 format. Now, what am I going to be doing? Well, let's do this. If you go to your Progress folder and you create a new folder, we'll call it Fonts. And as you can see, you can create one, two, a whole bunch of different fonts in here. It doesn't matter how many, but as long as you have the correct name. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose the EOT file. I'm also going to include the SVG, the true type, and the WOFF. And these files, and only these files, I don't really need anything else, are what I'm going to place inside the font folder for the progress files that we've been working with. So right now there's a folder called fonts. We have these ones here. If you look in the finished folder, you'll notice in the fonts here, I've got 
quite a few extra ones in there that you can sort of experiment with and take a look at and see which ones you like best. I'm just going to throw chunk in here for now and then we can look at something else in just a second. So in your progress files if you are now ready to work with this come back in the next video and I'll explain how we can implement this these different fonts in that chunk 5 font into our CSS and make it work on our browser.